Given the triple integral, we're asked to find five other iterated integrals that are going to yield the same result. And basically this means that we're going to rewrite the order of integration. Right now we have dz dx dy, but these directions would imply that we can change that order to being say dz dy dx, or starting with dy and then dx dz, dy dz dx, or starting with dx, dy dz, dx dz dy. And these other five orders are what we are interested in finding. And each one of these order of integrations is going to have its own unique set of limits. So we need to figure out what the limits are going to be to correspond with each of these particular orders. And in order to do that, we need to essentially graph the 3D domain. And that's going to help us to determine the new limits for each of those new orders. So let's start with this inside iteration. Integrating with respect to z and having those limits of integration go from 0 to y means that the lowest value of z is going to be 0, the highest value of z is going to be y. Essentially, we're going to be hitting z is equal to 0, which is the xy plane at that lower limit, and z is equal to y, which is another plane when that rectangular solid floats to the top. So we'll start by graphing the plane z is equal to y, since we're missing the x variable, we graph it in the yz plane, and this is a line with the slope of 1 that passes through the origin. Because we're missing the x variable, that would be extended in the direction of x. So let's pull this down into R3. We have this line in the yz plane that's going to extend in the direction of x. We know that the lower limit is going to be z is equal to 0, so we don't go below the xy plane. And let's wait until we have more information about the other limits before we improve on this graph. So now let's take a look at this middle iteration, which tells us that x is at the least going to be x is equal to y, and the upper limit on x is going to be 3. So we're looking at the x is equal to y graph and the x is equal to 3 graph. Now remember, this middle iteration is the projection of the 3D surface into the plane of the variables that were being held constant in the first iteration. So this is going to be a projection in the xy plane. So in the xy plane, we're going to get the line y is equal to x again x is equal to 3 is a vertical line. And for right now, let's say these two things do extend, but let's see what it looks like in R3 to determine whether or not these lines are going to extend outside of this first quadrant. So here's our line y is equal to x, and here's our line x is equal to 3. Now this z is equal to y plane passes through at this x-axis here, and we know that the lower limit on z was z is equal to 0, so this z plane is going to cut those lines off. We can also see that that x is equal to 3 plane is going to limit how far we travel in the direction of x, so let's back this line up. And since that region in the floor is going to be a bounded region, we can kind of get rid of these. And let's see if we can chop into this a little bit more after we roll in our third limits of integration. So now let's look at the values of y, which are going to go from 0 to 3. And we may already have enough information in our 3D graph to be able to interpret that. So the lower limit of our y value is going to be from 0 here, and the upper limits on our y value is going to be to y is equal to 3. So we have this ordered triple in the floor. Now it seems like we're getting pretty close here, although our ceiling function, which is that z is equal to y plane, shouldn't be going all the way back to the y z plane back here. Since we have this y is equal to x line, that's really going to chop into that ceiling function so that we end up with just this portion of that z is equal to y plane that's leaning over that first octant. We've got this region in the xy plane, and we've got this wall on this other side that is running straight up and down as well. Kind of tough to visualize, but let's say this ordered triple out here is going to be x is equal to 3, y is equal to 3, and z is equal to 3. So this seems like a pretty reasonable representative of our 3D domain region. So the projection of our surface in the xy plane is going to be here. If we shine a light here and project it back into the yz plane, remember z did not go any lower than 0, and the upper limit on y was 3, so that means we're going to have this ordered pair 3, 3 here in that projection. And finally, in the xz plane, we think about shining a light this way. Remember, this line was y is equal to z, 
that projection in the XZ plane is going to be this blue wall. And now I do believe we're ready to reorder these limits. So we'll begin by looking at the triple integral of some 4D function over this three-dimensional domain. We already have the order dz dx dy, so let's go dz dy dx to start, which means our floating rectangular solid is still going to be floating in the direction of z first, but then we're going to project into the xy plane to get the other limits of integration. Since we're floating with respect to z first, those z limits are going to stay the same from 0 to the z is equal to y plane. In order to then determine the limits with respect to y, we look at the xy plane and we're going to take that floating rectangle and float it in the direction of y first. So the y limits are going to go from 0 to x. And this time we have to call that line x because if we integrate with respect to y, we can't have any y's in those limits. So the y values go from 0 to x. And after we've floated up and down in here, we're going to now go right and left. The lower limit on x is going to be x is equal to 0, and the upper limit on x is going to be x is equal to 3. So these last limits are from 0 to 3. This time let's integrate with respect to y first, and then we'll do dx dz second and third. So now integrating with respect to y, we're going to be going in this direction of y, where our lower limit is going to be hitting that wall, z is equal to y, and our upper limit is going to be hitting the wall, y is equal to x. So with respect to y first, our lower limit is the y is equal to z function, and the upper limit is the y is equal to x function. And now we're going to look at the projection in the xz plane. Now we said we were going to integrate with respect to x next, and so that's going to put a lower limit on x of being the z value, that is the line, and the upper limit on x is going to be 3. So our inside iteration is going to be from z to 3. And now we look at our last limit, which is going to be the z values. Again, we go back to that xz plane, and when we're all the way at the bottom, of this interval, z is equal to 0, and when we're all the way to the top of this region, z is equal to 3. So we have from 0 to 3. Now let's look at the other possibility for having dy first, which is to have dz dx as the second and third iterations. Since we're going with respect to y again first, we're going to have those same inner limits for y from z to x, and we're also still going to go into the xz plane to get the other limits of integration. But this time we're going to go with respect to z first, which is going to put my lower limit at 0, and my upper limit is going to be this time x. So we'll say from 0 to x here. And then back up to the xz plane to see that if we go with respect to z first, and then we move this band right and left, the farthest left extreme has an x value of 0, and the farthest right extreme has an x value of 3. So again, we're 0 to 3 out here. Now the last two possibilities are going to be when we have dx coming first. If dx is first, we could have dy dz, or when dx is first, we could have dz dy. If we integrate with respect to x first, this floating box is floating in the direction of x. And when it's at its extreme position in the back, it's going to be hitting this wall, y is equal to x. So the lower limit for x is going to be just y. But the upper limit for x is going to be this x is equal to 3 plane that is this front wall, so we're going to have a lower limit of y and an upper limit of 3. And since these last two possibilities have that dx iteration first, that's going to be the same limits for both of those. And then for each of these, we're going to need to look into the yz plane. And so if we integrate first with respect to y, the lower limit is going to be z, and the upper limit is going to be 3, and then the z values would go from 0 to 3. So y was going from z to 3, and then z went from 0 to 3. Let's go back and consider what it would look like if we did dz first. If we integrate with respect to z first, we're going to go from 0, and now we would need to call that y, from 0 to y, and then when the band is at its extreme left value, the y value is 0, and when the band is at its extreme right, the y value is 3. So z would go from 0 to y, and then y would go from 0 to 3. And those are the five different ways that we could write this integral.